Okay, so I'll go through a simple guide on how to install Ubuntu on a, a brand new, that means a brand new SSD or brand new hard disk. So this guide is coming from the perspective that you are currently using Windows and you're doing all your char plotting and all your char farming on Windows, but you like the, as you've heard that it is more efficient for to plot Chia on Linux, such as uh, Ubuntu is actually one version of Linux, so such as uh, Ubuntu. Hence, you're interested in how to install Ubuntu, Linux, and how to actually start plotting on it. Okay, so first up, very simple, just go to Google and just how to install Ubuntu. The first result you'll see should be this one. It should show you uh, ubuntu.com tutorials. So if you click on it, let's say I open a new link here, yep, you will have this simple guide. But the issue is that this guide assumes that you already have the boot file ready. And if you scroll down here, you have uh, like at least 25 gigabyte, five gigabyte. Uh, my recommendation if you're gonna install Ubuntu is that at least get 128 gigabyte SSD or larger. Actually, I would highly recommend at least get a 250 or if not 500 gig, if your budget allows it. If you're really tight on budget, you want to spend the least amount possible yes 128 gigabyte is enough to start plotting chia but when you want to load up some other files and such that uh because my experience right now my experience using ubuntu is that the log files and as you keep installing programs into it it actually takes up quite a lot of space pretty quickly especially the log files they have a feature ubuntu is a feature whereby they auto create and auto stores the log files and the log files keep swelling up in size in terms of gigabytes and gigabytes. So it was I like it's like within the first one day or two days of using Ubuntu on the 128 gigabyte uh, SSD, I immediately get the error message that my uh, SSD is being filled up and I need to clear space in order for the operating system to work normally. And then I had to Google on how to clear space and it was not easy to follow because Linux is it's a pretty, it's open source software, so there's not a lot of easy to use guides. A lot of it is uh, guides created by other people, which is not very user friendly. Okay, but anyway, I mean, the Ubuntu and Linux software itself isn't very user friendly to begin with. You, you gotta be somewhat computer savvy and you gotta have some experience in command lines in order to really use it well. But anyway, moving it back to this, uh, so my recommendation is try to get at least a 250 gigabyte SSD or 500 gigabyte. Uh, at least if you're already tight on budget, 120 gigabyte is the minimum. It will suffice, but you will, might have to struggle with clearing space in uh, as you move on. Okay, and we most of us are not using DVD drives in this uh, time and age. Most of us use USB flash drives in order to install OS and software. So it has this uh, most group from USB flash drive and stuff like that. And requirements, okay. So going back to this, you will see that here, it doesn't teach you how to install Ubuntu or how to download Ubuntu into the USB flash drive, but it moves on direct to the installation. So the link to, the important link is here under point number two requirements. You will see that, uh, so if you, we have several tutorials explaining how to create Ubuntu DVD or USB flash drive. So let's open that. So click on the several tutorials here, right? And move, create a new page. So if you scroll down from here, the tutorials, look for this. How to create a bootable USB stick on Windows. Uh, if you're really using Ubuntu, you probably don't need this guide. But you're, you're probably coming from a Windows environment, Windows 10 environment, and you're interested in how to download and install Ubuntu. So let's create a bootable USB stick while we're on Windows. Okay, so let's create another link. I'll just click here. Okay, let's go in. Okay, so there's a step of... Uh, the, the guides here are pretty straightforward, so you can follow it most of the time. Then blah, 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 you can install, you can test out the environment. So the requirements are... You have to either get Rufus, or in my experience, you can get this software called Bilano Etcher. Let's see if I can show you a copy of that. I previously, okay, maybe I can just Google it. Bilano Etcher, E-T-C-H-E-R. 
Belana Belana Etcher. Okay, it's this one. So the website will be www.belana.io. If you open it up, yep. So it's pretty simple. You just download the software and it's pretty easy to flash. So maybe I can run a copy of it and show you how it works. Let's see. Yep, so I have a, this version 1.5.166 Belana Etcher. So you come in as an EXE. So basically when you double click on Belana Etcher, let's see if it runs. Okay, it runs. You have a very simple flash on file, flash on URL or clone the drive. So if you click flash on file, you need to select the ISO file that you want to flash to. That means uh, when you download the Ubuntu OS is in terms of the ISO file. And then you have to flash it to a USB drive. Okay. So Belano, Bele, uh, Belena Etcher is one of the software and the other software will be Rufus, which you can follow this link here on their tutorial. And you will guide you to how to download Rufus. And the usage is very simple. So usage Rufus wise, uh, this guide here on the Ubuntu website will guide you through. So if you can just follow through, and uh, here it says you need to get an Ubuntu ISO file, which you go to this get Ubuntu link, right? Ubuntu desktop. So most of us are going to use Ubuntu desktop. There's an Ubuntu server, which I've heard is a little bit more complex. So most of us here just going through Ubuntu desktop. Uh, plotting wise, I don't think there's a difference between Ubuntu desktop and Ubuntu server. So most, I would highly recommend most of most users here to use the Ubuntu desktop. So if you download this, you will move ahead to download and so on, right? I already have the Ubuntu downloaded, so you can see that's why I have a bracket one dot ISO here because I already have a copy stored. So not going to download that. But basically you need to download the ISO file and you need to get either a Belana Etcher or Rufus in order to write the ISO file to a USB stick. Okay, so going back to the guide, basically here, get Ubuntu, Rufus, and USB selection. So just follow the steps here, pretty simple. Launch the software, Rufus software, instead your USB stick, and they have all the steps here. So just follow the steps. Okay, the, here it says that in other Rufus, you have a non-bootable and free DOS. Make sure you select the free DOS because you do want to boot from that USB stick. Da -da 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 -da. Go for Apropia, UFI CSM. Then you select, so using Rufus, you select the Ubuntu ISO file that we previously downloaded and you write to it. So when you, when you want to write to it, please follow the settings from the screenshot here. Uh, this is what I followed as well. So it's the most fail safe method. Any additional downloads? So here it says that Rufus will require additional files to be downloaded. Uh, in my experience, yes, this has popped up as well. If you, just click yes and download additional files. There are write warnings, but just ignore the write warnings. Just write an ISO image and you're going to erase the data on that particular uh, USB drive. So USB stick. So you got to yeah, be ready to have that wiped. Okay, it will take, uh, in my experience, it will take a while. It says around 10 minutes. Yes. Uh, so it takes pretty long actually for Rufus to write the ISO, the ISO files over. Um, I don't know whether Belano actually will be faster. I haven't tried it, but I, in my experience, I have tried writing using Belana Etcher to write Hive OS onto USB stick and Belana Etcher was really fast with that. So maybe for a faster experience, you might want to use Belano Etcher instead. And once you are complete, you already have your Ubuntu bootable USB stick ready. So basically, once you have that, if you plug that USB stick into your so-called your uh, plotting, your plotting computer, so go into BIOS, select boot from the particular USB stick. And once you boot it up, you will probably come to this screen where they will ask you to either try Ubuntu or install Ubuntu. So if it's the first time you're using, for example, if you don't have your drive SSD ready yet, if you're ordering it online or if you're going to buy it later, you might want to just try Ubuntu. If you click on try Ubuntu, basically 
uh, they will run Ubuntu from the USB stick. But you have to take note that any software, additional software that we install in this mode of try Ubuntu will not stay on the USB stick. That means in my experience is the next time I boot up again from that same USB stick and I click on try Ubuntu again, all my previous loaded software such as my SWA plot manager and stuff, uh, Jecha installation, for example, uh, it was gone. So it was wiped away. So hence, if you really do want to plot char, you have to invest in another hard disk, either another hard disk or another SSD, and you have to install Ubuntu on that particular hard disk or SSD on a permanent basis. In this part, I'll walk you over how to install Ubuntu from the bootable USB drive. So once you plugged in your USB drive, if you go into your BIOS settings, you got to choose uh, your boot drive. So you got to choose the, I believe it should show a UEFI bootable uh, something disk on your USB drive. So if you choose that, then you be safe in your BIOS settings and you boot, let it boot. You should come to this screen. So in this screen, it's uh, it's the GNU Grub. That means it's a, it's sort of like a lower level screen where you can boot to before going into like other OSs such as Windows or Linux. And you can select the first one. So the first choice here, Ubuntu and press enter. Uh, take note that I've, I'm uh, recording this. I've taken screenshots of all the installation process, mainly because uh, I couldn't have OBS running while I'm just installing the brand new OS. So instead I took, used my handphone and took screenshots of every significant page of the installation process and just talk you through it. So in this case, uh, the Aorus logo is obviously from my motherboard. And when you boot into Ubuntu, you'll see this circular thingy as you show the progress. So just let it load. Once it loads finish, it should show this disk check. So it just so happens that every time you put in the installation media, Ubuntu will do a disk check on your installation media. Uh, you can actually press Ctrl C to cancel it, but uh, for me, I just let it complete. It takes about a few, one, two, two to five minutes for it to complete the disk check. I just let it run. So after the disk check is complete, you get boot into the install screen. So you see the Ubuntu desktop here. It's something like a polygon panther face. Uh, not too bad. Looks pretty good. It has this uh, gradient of like red to purple uh, backdrop, which is pretty nice as well. Then uh, choose your keyboard layout. So I choose English US for my keyboard layout and then just press continue to move on. So in the next screen, you will, they will ask you what kind of apps do you want to install? If you want a very minimal installation, you can just choose the this one, minimal installation with just web browser and basic utilities. Well, I chose the normal one where it has like office software, like it comes with games, media players, all that, just for a better user experience. So check download updates while installing Ubuntu. This is a good. And I also checked this install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi and additional media formats. Uh, I checked this as well because I am planning to use my uh, plotting machine for GPU mining as well. So I wanted to install the so-called the graphics drivers for NVIDIA for my NVIDIA graphics cards. So I checked this as well. But if you're running on a very bare bones, that means uh, if you're just a pure hardcore plotting machine that is uh, only has a very basic graphic card, maybe a, an NVIDIA GT 710 or like a 1030, something very basic that you don't really need any fancy graphic drivers because you're not going to be mining from it. You can actually uncheck this to save up on some hard disk space and make your installation faster. Okay, so from here, just click continue to move on. And you have this, uh, so if you're installing on a fresh SSD like I am, so you will say the computer currently has no detector operating systems. I would check this, erase this and install Ubuntu. So what this does is it formats the SSD into, I believe should be the ext4 file format and then it installs Ubuntu on it. So you just click continue. All right. And from here, they will prompt to select the drive that you want to install Ubuntu on. So in my hard disk, I have two one terabyte Patriot Burst NVMe SSD. So these are Gen3. Uh, so these Patriots are the VPN 100 Gen3 NVMe SSDs, one terabyte each. So these two are my temp drives. I'm not going to install any OS on them. And you can see that this, the 10 terabyte Seagate backup 
is actually my uh, external hard disk, which I'm going to use as a perm permanent plot location. So I'm not going to install any operating system on it. So I'm going to install it on my 128 gigabyte Alexa SSD. So this is a SATA SSD that I bought exclusively to in a uh, small SSD, small and pretty relatively cheap per se, uh, to purely for installing operating systems. And once you've selected the correct SSD, correct hard disk to install your OS, just click on install now or the bottom right. All right. And you will say your prompt to you if it changes will be written to the disk otherwise, and so on and so on. Hence, it says that your partitions in the disk is going to be changed. So apparently that this, this even though it's brand new, it came with some, it was pre-partitioned before. Maybe I'm not too sure whether I initialized it or not. I think not. And it will say pulling partitions are going to be formatted. Uh, there will be something ESP, so some probably like their backup partition, and the main partition should be formatted as ext4, which is the file format used for Linux systems. So nothing much you can do here. You can just click continue. It's just a notification. So the region I'm staying in Singapore, so it auto detects my location, and I'm gonna select continue, and they will have this. Uh, Progress bar, install progress bar, which is a good update of uh, how fast your operating system is installing. So just let it run finish, just wait patiently. And once installation is complete, you'll see this pop-up box says installation complete, and you can click on restart now to restart your system, right? So at the restart screen, once you've clicked that, it will prompt to please remove your installation medium and then press enter. So in this case, uh, it's pretty unique that Ubuntu will prompt you to remove your bootable USB, bootable USB stick from your USB drive before it allows you to reboot. So you gotta remove that bootable USB stick and then press enter before it proceeds with the uh, restart pro uh, process. Once, yes, uh, once your computer has restarted, you'll boot into this screen where you prompt you to connect your online accounts. For me, I connected my Google account, but it is entirely optional. You can just press skip to skip that. And that's it. So basically from this screen onwards, uh, let's go back to this. From this screen onwards, basically your Ubuntu installation is complete and you can continue to install other software such as Chia or your plot manager, such as a SWA plot manager, which I'll go through later.